France. For many of us Brits, we picture city sites, bustling streets and cafe culture. But if we head deeper into the country, there's another side that's wild and untamed. I really love France. It's a naturalist's dream. And the reason for that is all the different habitats that you find here. In this series, I'm going to explore them in search of the many hidden wonders that there are to be found in wild France. I'll be traveling to some of the most spectacular regions of France, from the snow-capped mountains to the rolling plains, from deep forest to rugged coastline, and discovering the extraordinary variety of landscapes that this country offers. Oh, that's so much better. I'll be exploring the unique plants and wildlife that thrive in this unspoilt wilderness. Hello. <laughs> and the secrets that are hidden deep within it. Wow, that's amazing. On my adventure through wild France. Listen to that thunder, isn't that wonderful? Awesome. Mist in the valleys, the sound of a nightingale across the river. Why wouldn't you come here? This is the River Ardèche that carves its way through the central limestone of southern France, falling into the Rhône. The Ardèche region lies in the heart of France. It sits between the plateau and the mountains of the Massif Central and the high peaks of the Alps. It's a place I've been visiting for many years. I have a strong feeling for this region and I can't wait to explore it. This is a landscape that is not just rich in wildlife, but has also had a really long association with people. I'll be exploring the Ardèche Gorge, starting from the top of the cliffs, through thick forests, deep into caves, and eventually down to the river. When people head to the Ardèche, they go straight to the river and the dramatic gorge, and that's understandable, but the, the, the landscape that dominates the area actually are the hills either side of it, and they're clad in this wonderful forest. This, this broken limestone country holds lots of secrets, and then in amongst this, there are all sorts of things to be found. Like this, this is butcher's broom, which grows a plenty here, and you can see it coming into fruit there. And it gets its name because the ends of each of these leaves has a very sharp, stiff spike on it. And in the past, butchers used to make a brush of that to clean off their chopping block because the little spikes could pick up any little bits of tissue. Believe it or not, that's in the asparagus family. And when it's very young, at the beginning of the spring, the new shoots, if you cover them and keep them blanched so they don't go green, and then collect them and cook them steamed like asparagus shoots. They're quite delicious. Deeper in the forest, there is a rare opportunity I just can't miss. Without a doubt, one of the best kept secrets in the Ardèche is the underground world. This is limestone country, and wherever you have limestone and rain, you get potholes and caves because the limestone literally dissolves. Some of those holes in the ground have historically proved useful. There was one just here that the local people used to use to get rid of garbage and dead animals. Until in 1935, Robert de Jolie descended with 40 metres of ladder and discovered the most amazing cavern. Robert de Jolie had been exploring caves for over 30 years when he made his most famous discovery here, the Ornac Cave. Special permission allows me to enter through the original entrance in the roof of the cave. But this means I'll have to abseil down. So you can imagine what it must have been like. 1935, the first time people went down into the unknown, literally entering the bowels of the Ardèche. Fascinating. 
It feels just the same now. I've no idea what I'm going to see down there. OK. Au revoir. Ça va, Ray? Ça va bien, merci. Amazing. Wow. It's like going into a forgotten land. For hundreds of years, the locals had wondered about this mysterious hole. They told stories that it was haunted, perhaps to keep curious children away. That is amazing. But Robert discovered that the truth was even more breathtaking than fiction. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. What a sight. What a staggering way to enter a cavern. Unlike me, tourists who come here have to use a man-made opening involving 700 steps. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Apart from its sheer size, this cave is known for its incredibly diverse rock formations. When Robert de Jolie descended into this cave, it must have been incredible. He, he was coming into a place that was well known locally. There were lots of associations with this hole. But of course, what he didn't realize was what he was going to find in here. I mean, this is as high as Niagara Falls. It's truly spectacular. This huge mound was formed over thousands of years by animals falling to their deaths. Some of the bones found here date back to prehistoric times. See, looking at this, it's like looking at a, at a coral reef. It's so intricate, and yet there seem to be patterns all mixed with a, a good helping of chaos, too. It's incredible. These patterns are created by water dripping through the limestone. As it dries, its minerals solidify into stalactites that hang from the ceiling. As the water reaches the ground, it deposits more minerals, which build up, creating cones or stalagmites. It's like walking through an art gallery. It's wonderful. This cave extends over an area of 200,000 square meters but tourists are only allowed to see just a fraction of it. Back in the 1960s, cavers coming into this part of the cavern detected in a small hole a passage of air. And they reasoned that if there's air passing, there might be another cavern. So they enlarged that hole and went through. And what they discovered was Oniac 2, Oniac 3, Oniac 4. Stefan Tassino, a local caver, has agreed to take me into Orniac cavern number two. The tunnel made by previous cavers is so tight that the crew have to put down their equipment. To avoid damaging the walls, we will rely instead on a small portable camera. There are no lights on in the cave. A single light bulb would encourage moss to grow down here and ruin the formations. We walk for one kilometer to get to the heart of Orniac 2. Here I get the chance to see the most delicate of all cave formations, helictites. Amazing. Unlike stalactites and stalagmites, these rock formations appear to defy gravity and grow horizontally. They are very slow to form. A few centimeters take over a hundred years. Well, wow. I really hope the shots work because it was incredible. Those helictites, they're, they're amazing. Yes, really fine. They're so fine and, and they're spectacular. That's really something like a fairy grotto. Thank you very much for showing me, Stefan. Je vous en prie. There are still many kilometers of unexplored caves down here, but I feel the need to return to daylight 
to carry on my adventure above ground. North of the Ornyak Cave is the entrance to the gorge and my destination tomorrow morning. The Ardèche is a fast-flowing river cutting through 30 kilometers of limestone. The gorge and its beaches are full of wildlife, but the best time to catch it is early, so I'm ready to start my journey by 6 a.m. There are two good ways to explore the Ardèche Gorge. You can walk it or you can canoe it, but by far the best is to go by canoe. You get the most amazing view. And that gorge is so pristine, I can't wait to get in there. The Pont d'Arc was formed by thousands of years of erosion from the Ardèche River. At 66 meters high, it is the largest natural arch in Europe. This is the gateway to the gorge, one of the greatest natural wonders in all of France. There was a terrific storm last night and that's put some water in the river, which is a good thing. But look at the mist, oh, it's glorious. It's as beautiful as I've ever seen it. The cliffs are a natural habitat for bird life. That's fantastic. <laughs> I've spotted a peregrine who's just caught a baby pigeon. He heads off to feast on his find. It's a bit tough on the pigeons, but the peregrine's got to feed too. <laughs> peregrine falcons are formidable hunters. They feed on smaller birds that they are able to catch mid-flight. Well adapted to the steep gorge sides, they can dive down at speeds of 200 miles an hour. Next, it's down the rapids to find out the secrets that have been hidden here for years. I'm in the Ardèche Gorge within the heart of France, surrounded by high limestone cliffs which loom over the winding Ardèche River. This whole area is protected and I'm going to meet local wildlife ranger Olivier Perronel, who is in charge of keeping this untamed pocket of France safe. The banks and beaches that line the river are home to a varied plant life. Everything that grows here thrives in a Mediterranean climate. Olivier is going to reveal some of their traditional uses. Olivier, this uh, particular uh, beach I've visited many times myself because the plants are incredible here. Ah, incredible. But you have a traditional interest and knowledge in the plants. Yes, because uh, my grandmother was uh, always in the place and she finds some plant to, for heating or for medicine. That's too. so interesting. Well, show, show me some of the things that she yes, taught you. Yes, of course, Ray. Uh, here you have um, the traditional plant from a Mediterranean area, like, for example, the erangium, er eringo. So we've got this plant that, that looks like a, a, a sea holly, but it's, it's not. This is the field eringo. And it, it contains uh, sugar. Sugar, amidon. A lot of good things. So you, you can cook this or you can use it raw. Like a carrot. That's delicious. It's the same family. And it's sweet. You can really taste the sugar. If you, we find maybe the thyme. Thyme, yep. Thyme. Olivia, I've heard that um, in this area people recognise um, different uses of the thyme for medicine, depending on the altitude at which it's collected. Is that right? Yes, it's right. Here, we are at low altitude, and uh, it's good for antiseptic. If you go at the top of the gorge, it's not good for, for the same. It's good for kill the fungus, fungus in the foot, you know? So local people had worked it out by observation, yeah, and, observation. Now, and, and now science has supported their discovery. Exactly. That's in, it's incredible. It's incredible, yeah. I think it's really important yes. because when you know the use of a plant, it's your friend. Ah, yes. The plant life here has adapted to the hot conditions, but I'm eager to get back near the cool river. 
The shallow waters are a great place to spot wildlife if you look closely. What have you got, Olivier? A yeah. snake. Fantastic. I find a viperine. Viperine, yeah. You know it? I do. The viperine snake is part of the adder and viper family, but unlike adders, has no venom. This is the, the one that has the round eye, not the, the slit. Exactly. That's the difference between a, a viper and viperine. Yeah. She's, uh, she looks like vipers. She looks like an adder, but she's but not an adder. No, nothing. But she's harmless. Thing. She's very quiet. She hits uh, frogs. Yeah. She eats some fish. And she's eating by birds, a lot of birds. So she's very important in the, in the nature and in the equilibri equilibrium of the natural Equilibrium of the natural yes. world, yeah. So beautiful. The river makes the perfect home for wildlife, but humans have had a long history of living here too. All around me I can see small caves in the cliff walls and some of these caves have been used by man for thousands of years. No one is allowed to enter them as they are protected, but I have been given special permission to enter this one. Here you've got longer legs than me. <laughs> we have to scramble to get to it, but it's worth the effort. Lord, look at this. It's an incredible view. This cave has a long human history. It is thought that people lived here ever since the late Stone Age, 10,000 years ago. But it also has more recent history. This cave and others nearby were used as a refuge by the resistance in World War II. Many of them were never discovered by the enemy. Some people like us because but Olivier has his own history with the cave. And when you were a boy, you used to come and camp here, didn't you? Yes, but you are not in natural reserve. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the goats like this cave today. The, the floor is covered in goat droppings. It's a uh, sauvage goat. Wild um, goats, yeah. Yeah, wild goat. And looking around, I see you've got this plant here that a, a lot of people from Britain won't know. It's called Smilax. And you find it in, in hot countries, largely. Hot places. And... Um, it's got a leaf, lovely heart-shaped leaf, and it's covered in thorns, and it's a plant that you can think is just like a bramble. But if you're hiking and you find this plant, don't try to push through it, because these thorns have a little surprise, because on the inside of the thorn, they're like a blade, and they dig in, and then they just score you like razor blades. So this is a, a, a plant it's very much best to back off from. But there's an interesting French name for this plant, isn't there? This is a smurf plant. In English, it's called the smurf plant because they eat it. And uh, you can make a blue dye from this plant, and that's why smurfs are blue. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. It's a great place, isn't it? Really lovely. It's quite. Yeah, it's peaceful. Ah, yes. Out of the shelter of the cave, after a hot scramble down, I'm ready to cool off. Oh, I said much better. I'm coming to the end of my journey through the Ardèche Gorge, but there's one thing that I still want to see. Olivier has given me a tip-off that this section of the river is where a family of beavers live. These fascinating creatures are mainly nocturnal, and dusk is the time that they are most active. I put the camouflage net up just as a little screen so that I can move without disturbing uh, beaver if they come along here. This, this is what the beaver are interested in, this poplar. That's absolutely perfect food for them. I'm just sitting and wait. An adult beaver can cut through a small poplar tree in just a few minutes using their powerful lower jaw muscles and specially adapted incisor teeth.
There they are, there's the people. And it's dark down. The beavers on the river don't build lodges like you see in Canada. They have no need to do that here. I'm not sure where this one will be living. Perhaps there's a little cave that we can't see that it can get into. Obviously the limestone is full of little porous pockets. But uh, that's amazing. <laughs> Of course, beavers, just like in Canada, were once really uh, valuable because of their fur. And uh, they virtually disappeared from Europe. So to see beavers doing so well here is wonderful. And it just shows you how important it is to have am amazing natural reserves like the Ardèche Gorge. They're so valuable for preserving species and to maintaining biodiversity, that ever important quest. Wonderful. What a way to finish my journey. The Ardèche never fails to surprise me. It must truly be one of the most breathtaking landscapes of wild France. Join me next time as I explore the exotic wetlands of the Camargue. Still to come, David is on a manhunt as we head back to Coronation Street next. Then Pauline makes a big decision. We're in 80s Sheffield as all new Brief Encounters continues at 9. And tomorrow night, the team work their magic to make an animal haven. All new Love Your Garden is at 8.